All right. Uh, first of all, I hope uh, Pavi is okay, the quarterback. What a fantastic player he is. He is number one key for us going into this game was to uh, affect the quarterback, and he makes it really, really hard. He's just a, um, a really, really good football player, and, and hope he is okay. Can I get some water, please? Um, uh, really good. Anybody? Someone? Locker room, please. Sorry. It's usually um, some up here. Um, but I hope he is okay. Really, really proud of our – thank you, Steve. Really, really proud of our, our football team to come into this stadium. Uh, this ain't an easy place to play for a lot of reasons. And, and um, to come in here against another ranked team and to have another uh, three touchdown plus win uh, over an SEC team to become uh, bowl eligible as well uh, to get uh, – thank you very much um, – to become the first South Carolina team and I think since 2011 to win three SEC road games is a huge accomplishment. Um, just really, really happy for our guys uh, to, you know, come in here. I think everyone thought there'd be a letdown coming off last week and uh, for our guys to come in here and, you know, know that it's going to be a tough, gritty, hard game just because of the way Vanderbilt plays football is, um, is, uh, Really satisfying for us as a football team. Like the way that we responded uh, to adversity, whether it be the defense when the when Vanderbilt was in field position or was in scoring position. I think they had three plus drives, maybe inside the 35 yard line or 40 yard line, and got no points out of it or something like that. Um, we did a really good job. Anytime the offense needed to respond, they did. Whether it be the beginning of the game, whether it be the first drive of the second half, uh, whether it be after Vanderbilt scored, we uh, we went right back down the field uh, on them. And uh, that's the mark of a, a really good team, which we are. Um, the uh, people that do the rankings don't think we're worth the crap, and that's fine. Keep crapping on us. That's the way we like it as well. Um, don't rank us this week. We're, we're good where we are. We just like to just, just lay low and uh, work really, really hard and come out and have fun on Saturdays uh, as well. I promised uh, Sir Big Spur I would do this. I'm disappointed that Sir Big Spur is not here. I think it's ridiculous that this is the only place apparently in the SEC that doesn't allow live mascots in the stadium. And that's what makes this league special is the fact that LSU can have a freaking tiger at their stadium tonight, but we can't, we can't bring Sir Big Spur. So Sir Big Spur came over and said, uh, gave us a send off uh, before we left the facility yesterday, and I told them I would say hello to Sir Big Spur in the press conference, so we miss you guys. Come on, Vandy, do better. Um, I saw the guy from SEC Shorts was here. I hopefully, F S I'm a big fan of SEC Shorts. Uh, Monday is the longest work day of the week for us, and I look forward to when it comes out on Monday mornings because it gives me about a five-minute break uh, to watch it, so hopefully we gave them some great content uh, as well. Love what they do. For sure, and then just really happy for our team. Uh, we, I told him in the hotel before we came over. I told him last night that that uh, you know Ryan Suckup came and spoke to our team last night and did an awesome job. And, and he talked about how much fun as a former player it is to watch our guys play, just because of the togetherness they have, the love they have for one another. That it's evident on tape, and it is. Uh, it's it's uh, we got a special group of guys, and that's what I'm so excited about. I mean, it sucked last year not going to a bowl game, and one of the biggest reasons is obviously we're five and seven, but not having another month with that team because that team was so much fun to coach. So I just told him in the locker room, it's so awesome that we get at least another month together as a football team. After the end of the regular season, we got a lot more to accomplish in these next three games. Our final SEC home game of the year, our final SEC game of the year uh, next week back in williams Bryce. But awesome night tonight. And thanks to our fans. I mean, it felt, it sounded like williams Bryce Stadium in there at times tonight for it to be a sold out crowd here at Vanderbilt. But the most noise was made by the Carolina fans throughout the night. They're the best fans in the world and, and uh, grateful for them. Questions? Yeah, um, kudos to our guys to be able to, to step up. And obviously, we knew that was an issue last year, David, just a lack of depth on the defensive line. And we knew we needed to get more depth than we did. You know, Jules wasn't here tonight, but Kel came in. And, <clears throat> and um, those guys rotated in and out. And then we were able to rotate a lot of edge players as well. Uh, kudos to Peyton Williams coming in and playing. I mean, it's the first time I've ever – we come off the field from pregame warm-ups and, and Clint, the trainer, tells me that DQ's out. I'm like, DQ's out? I'm like, how's DQ out? And he obviously – aggravated something in pregame warm-ups and wasn't able to go, which is disappointing. But kudos to Peyton Williams being able to come in and play like he did and, and really, uh, really play well. Shane, this is, you know, two years ago you came to Vanderbilt, got your sixth win, became ball eligible. 
Is it more special tonight coming back here and becoming bowl eligible again? Um, yeah, I think so, for sure. Um, we got bowl eligible, and then we went down and embarrassed ourselves in Gainesville seven days later. So hopefully that's not the same thing. But it was really cool. Uh, so many similarities. Rainy night, uh, rainy forecast two years ago, and then it never really did much during the game. And, and um, you know, back and forth game a couple years ago, and that was a special night to get bowl eligible as well. Uh, sorry, looking at some of these scores. Wow. Well, um, it was really special to come in here and get bowl eligible two years ago, but I'd say it's extra special tonight, Jack, just coming off the season that we had last year and very few people thought we would, you know, I saw a lot of those preseason projections and it certainly didn't have us winning six games this season and uh, having six wins with three games to go, you know, so proud of our guys, but just so happy for them, for Sean, Tonka, Boogie, Luke, I mean, on and on and on for those guys to be able to be bowl eligible and and uh, another win over a nationally ranked team. Really proud of them. Yep. With uh, Tree coming in for Josiah, I guess first, how's Josiah and I guess Rocket popped a couple of those big runs? Yeah. There, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was good to see Tree. <coughs> excuse me. It was good to see Tree come in um, and um, do what he did in a tough situation. I hope Josiah is okay. Uh, a little bit of a lower body issue. He tried to go in the second half, but just didn't feel like he could push off and do what he needed to do. But I don't think it's anything serious. I hope not. But uh, you know, Trees played a lot of football around here and and has been wor working really, really hard to be ready to play when his number was called up on. So he did a thought he did a really good job tonight. And then yes, Rocket popped a couple of those runs. That was huge. Um, and then the screen, we knew we needed, that was one thing during the bye week is that we knew we needed to get better at our screen game as well with, you know, pass rushes, get pass rushers against us. And with some of the pressure we had given up, we needed to become a better screen team. And we worked really hard at that. And it was good to see us finally pop one tonight. We were close on a couple last week against A&M. So that was really good to be able to do that tonight. I know during the week you mentioned wanting to limit their time of possession because they hold on to the ball a ton. And I believe at some point during the third quarter, I think their average third down distance was like third and eight. So what did you guys do very well on those first two downs to make it to where Vanderbilt didn't have a ton of third and shorts and be able to smother the clock down? Yeah, just try and be um, disruptive. They make it really, really tough. Obviously, they run the ball well. The quarterback's a weapon. You know, they do so much offensively just from a personnel grouping standpoint. I mean, y'all saw it. I mean, they're just rolling personnel groupings in and out. And there's they present you more personnel groupings than any team in this league and then more formations than really any team in this league. So it's a lot. And uh, I thought Clayton did a great job of just, you know, being tuned in to what personnel grouping was on the field, who was out there uh, as well, and just trying to be as disruptive as possible possible on first down, whether it be up front with some movement or pressures or whatever it might be. Uh, and then just, like I said, being able to affect the quarterback. And um, we were able to do that. You guys were 9 to 12 on third downs tonight. Part of the same thing the other way, you guys had a lot of third and shorts. What were you seeing on third downs and how big were those just to kind of get some of the drives over the finish line in the second half? Yeah, I didn't realize that. 9 to 12, geez. Um, knew we had to be. I mean, with this team, they were leading the SEC in time of possession. Uh, I think they were averaging like 32 minutes of possession coming into this game. So we talked about it, that we need to stay on the field. And on Wednesday in practice when we did third down, we talked about it. This is going to be critical. Like we can't be putting these guys back on the field because, you know, the way they play ball, if you're not converting on third down, then you're all, your defense is out there a lot. The offense on the uh, Vanderbilt's offense is running clock down. And next thing you know, it's the fourth quarter, and it's you've played 40 plays, and it's 10 to 10. And um, th that was really good. But to, to get to those third down situations, we had to be productive on first down. And I thought it was just a lot of great individual plays, whether it be Rocket, whether it be Lenoris, again, kind of the same sort as last week, Allen, just great players making individual, individual efforts as well. Do you feel like you guys are hitting your peak right now? Or how were you able to get this team to where it's like almost playing its best football at the end of the season? Yeah, um, we just continue to get better, and that's what we've done last season. And I think back to, you know, last year, and this is not a shot at you, Jordan. I like you a lot, but your paper sometimes is a doozy. <laughs> and last year when we played Vanderbilt, y'all wrote one of the most ridiculous articles I've ever read in the history of journalism, where you had the Clemson beat writer write an article about how far South Carolina's program had fallen in 2023 because we weren't favored by more against Vanderbilt. That might have been one of the most embarrassing pieces of journalism I've ever read to say this team has fallen as a program in 2023 because they're not favored by more 
against Vanderbilt, that in 2022 they were favored by this much against Vanderbilt, but in 2023 they're not, so all of a sudden they've fallen as a program. I mean, that's just some Bush League stuff right there by that guy. Nothing against you. So uh, we hadn't fallen as a program. We were uh, dealing with some injuries last season, and um, Vanderbilt, i got news for you, was is a pretty good football team, as we saw tonight as well. So to answer your question, as far as this, we're just a team that just continues to get better. Um, D Knight told me coming off the field, we're just getting started. And I believe that. You know, this is a group that's very hungry. Uh, this is a group that has high expectations. Uh, once again, there's going to be a lot of things tonight from this tape that we got to look at and get better in all three phases. But uh, really proud of the guys to be able to come on the road. And we got to get guys healthy. Obviously, we were like a mass unit tonight. I felt like Clint Haggard came up to me more tonight than ever in my time here about so-and-so's down, so-and-so's down, so-and-so's back up, so-and-so's back up. And that was on and on and on. So we got to get healthy without a doubt. But, you know, proud of the way that we've came for a program that had fallen apparently so hard a year ago when we played Vanderbilt. Um, you know, we got a lot of work to do. We've made a lot of progress since then, apparently. And again, I like you, Jordan, but that's just ridiculous. Don't, don't yell at me, I guess. Phil, when have I ever gotten on you, man? <laughs> I got two quick ones for you. Uh, just your thoughts on the way Sellers um, – how solid he was in the passing game tonight. And then on the back end, your secondary defense, eight passes broken up, no penalties on the defense. Yeah, that was good. Uh, you said Sellers first? Yeah. Yeah, he made, like last week, some great individual efforts where there's pressure, and then all of a sudden he's scrambling out of the pocket. <laughs> Dow mentioned one time on the headphones that maybe we should just call a play where we just allow pass rush to get there and just let him run around and make a play because – it's worked out pretty good for us as well, but Lenore's um, did a really good job of managing everything, and, and I think at halftime, I don't know what he finished, but I know at halftime he was really, really good from a statistics standpoint, 9 of 14 or something like that, I believe, at halftime, and, and uh, we're fairly good from a turnover standpoint. I know he had the one that, that came out, but he's just a, uh, he's just a player and uh, continues to get better each and every week, and, and then defensively, Really good job by those guys. I mean, uh, the quarterbacks, are pro they got good receivers. Um, you know, your guy didn't think they were last year, but they got good receivers. Uh, and this year they really do. Three's a really good player. Zero's a really good player. Nine is a weapon uh, at tight end. And they're tough because of Pavia, the way he's able to scramble and then throw the ball downfield. Our guys had to be very disciplined, and it was gonna, they were going to have to make some competitive plays tonight. And they did on defense, but we did on offense as well. You know, you talk about some of the catches that Nick Harbour had uh, as well, where it's a competitive catch and he's got to make a play. And Josh Simon on the touchdown, you know, we, we won the competitive play battle from a pass game uh, standpoint. Yeah. Huge. That's when it was seven nothing, right? Yeah, huge. Uh, just guys making a play. Uh, didn't like the pressure we gave up for sure, but really good job by uh, those two guys making a play. We worked the scramble drill a lot. Um, the off week that we worked it during the off week, and then when we came, I didn't think it was good enough. And then when we came back from the off week, the Sunday before A and M, we did it again, just because of situations like that. And there's a plan. Guys got to go certain places when he scrambles, and and those two guys being able to connect and make a play was was uh, really really big, without a doubt. And kudos to, um, kudos to them. But yes, absolutely. One just to get us flip the field position where if we don't finish the drive, we're at least punting and we're pinning them back in there as well, which Kai did a great job punting tonight too, by the way. But uh, then to finish that drive with a touchdown, that was, um, that was huge because points in this game are, 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 are critical against these guys just because of the way they play football and how short, in the, how short or how they can shorten the game, I should say. Yeah, he's just a relentless competitor, sideline to sideline, the way the guys respect him. He spoke in our team meeting last night and, and uh, wowed the guys, as he always does. And he's just a really good football player, and I'm so happy for him. I mean, he's a guy that you know, continues to uh, impress teams at the next level as well. And, um, you know, I'm happy for him. There's, there's – uh, um, we got a bunch of really, really good young men in our program, but he's right at the top, everything he stands for and the kind of person he is as well, and just a, a great player. Jordan? What's the difference between Rocket Sanders now and Rocket Sanders from a month ago? Uh, I would hope, you know, 
not that he was ever unhealthy, but just healthier, you know, that his body is – he came off an off week and he's been able to knock some of the rust off and, and whatnot. Uh, certainly we're, we've been better around him from an offensive standpoint, and that helps. Uh, the perimeter blocking, you know, he had the run long run tonight. <laughs> Everybody was screaming at whoever that was, JB or Nick or somebody, just get out of the way uh, so just Rocket could go. But for the most part, the, the uh, perimeter blocking has been, has been better. And, um, you know, he just continues to gain in confidence. And, and he's having fun out there, too. Not that he wasn't before the season, Jordan, but he just he just he has a smile on his face and is just having fun at practice and, and really just has that extra gear maybe that he didn't before. I don't know. Initially, it was a shoulder. When he first went down, they told me it was a shoulder. It's kind of like the night went, David. Initially, they told me it was a shoulder. And then they came back and they said, hey, we're going to wrap his hand. I'm like, his hand? What happened to the shoulder? And they're like, the shoulder's good, but it's the hand now. Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll find out more tomorrow. But it was, a, uh, it was a lot. I think it's OK. He seemed fine in the locker room there. Um, seemed fine in the locker room afterwards. So hopefully, we can, I mean, that was a physical game. And, and um, you know, a, a, we knew it was going to be. That's just how they play. So we needed to. We had to defend cut blocks tonight. We did that for the most part, but it was a physical game. And, and um, you know, hopefully we can get healthy. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you, guys. Thank you. Travel safe.